guys, all right. I just wanted to say before we get started, thank you to each and every one of y'all because we have finally reached 10,000 subscribers. I mean, at the recording of this video, we're actually at 11,500 and some odd subscribers. That is ridiculous. I am going to probably talk about it a bit more in another video, but let's just say my goal was 10,000 subscribers by the end of 2018. And to know that we hit that within the first like three months is absolutely insane. I just wanted to show my gratitude to each and every one of y'all. I'm going to try to figure out something special to do for y'all. If you have any ideas, I don't know I don't know what to do right now. If you have any ideas, let me know down in the comments below and I'll uh, see I'll see what I can do, okay? So I just wanted to say thank you. And now here you go again to your regularly scheduled program. What is up guys, Forrest here, and today we're going to discuss seven skills you need as an iOS developer. Is this, could this be like a, a revamp of Friday Under 5, considering it's, it's structured like those videos and it's, and it's going to be out on Friday, so, uh, nah, nah, I don't know if I'm going to keep it under five minutes, so let, let's just roll the regular intro and get to it. All right, so I'm going to roll through these seven skills that you need as an iOS developer and kind of give you a little bit of backstory, a little bit of knowledge on each one. Do more research and learn these skills if you plan to become an iOS developer. And sure, I know there's going to be people saying you missed this, 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 and that. I know, I know there's so much more to to iOS development, to software development, what have you, but these are the seven things that I just think you need as an iOS developer. This is just my take. So take that with a grain of salt, take it as you will. Let's get started. Skill numero uno, Swift. Swift is the language of iOS development, Mac OS development now. It used to be Objective-C and sure, many applications are still built with Objective-C. If you go work for another company as an iOS developer, you may need to work with Objective-C, but you should learn Swift first. One, it's easier. So then when you're learning an easier language, it's easier to stick with it, especially if you're just starting out. And Swift is one of the easiest I've ever learned. Objective-C, a little bit more difficult, but if you know Swift, at least at a level of, you know, where you're getting hired by other companies, you should be able to work with Objective-C just fine. You won't need to know off the top of your head every little thing about Swift or any programming language for that matter, but you should understand the basic syntax, optionals, control flow, classes, inheritance, initialization, and air handling. And there are many different places to learn Swift. You can use uh, Apple's own Swift book, which changes because Swift is a newer language, so the syntax and particular things change over time. And that book gets updated over time, or you can invest in something like a whole iOS development course on Udacity. You can have a membership to Pluralsight. I always link down below in the description a Udemy course that actually where I learned iOS development, so check that out. I don't have any affiliation with them, but that is an affiliate link, just keep that in mind. And I only say that because I like to be transparent. If you use that link and purchase that course, I get a commission and that helps fund the channel and allows me to create more videos and hopefully get better equipment and things of that nature. Skill number two is spatial reasoning, basically the understanding of how to think in 3D. So imagine you are the end user. You want to make sure your buttons are properly laid out. So this has a lot to play into design and not just user interface, but more so user experience. You have to understand how the user will interact with your application. A major help when it comes to dealing with spatial reasoning is that if you're developing for iPhones, you're developing for iOS, you should probably be using or used to using an iPhone. If you're developing for Android, you should be used to using an Android. I've been doing a lot of Android development recently, and it's a little bit different because I'm so used to, to iPhone, how iPhones interact with people, because although they're both mobile, you know, there are particular guidelines for iPhones. There are particular guidelines for Android and what's expected in an, an iOS native application or an Android native application application because the user interface and the user experience are slightly different. So be a user of iPhone if you're going to be an iOS developer. And that's a very good segue into skill number three, which is design guidelines. So kind of, well, the design guidelines for iOS because we want it to be familiar and related to iOS and kind of adhere to a, uh, a more strict design guideline, which we use MVC, Model View Controller. What Model View Controller does is basically determines or defines rather 
data, how it's stored, how it's updated, and how it's presented to the user based on user interactions with your application. Android development will use MVC, but they also use MVP. They use MVVC, which is model view, view model, and MVP is model view uh, uh, pre presentation. Model view presentation is MVP. So there are a few different design guidelines over there, but when it comes to iOS, we should strictly stick to MVC model view controller. And two other notes when it comes to design guidelines are delegate pattern, which is kind of how information is passed among objects in Coco. And if you've developed an iOS application, you know Coco, very important. We use it a lot. And then how notifications work. So basically delegate pattern is one sender, one receiver. Uh, notifications, as you may know, is one sender, multiple receivers. Those are just a few points to take note when it comes to design guidelines. Skill number four is networking. And networking can be interpreted in many different ways, but in this scenario, networking is essentially how your app interacts with the web. A lot of times we'll be pulling data from the web using APIs, and in order to kind of communicate, we'll use J uh, JSON data, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. So when it comes to working with networking and connecting your application to the web and things of that nature, that's what you need to know. Skill number five is core data. Core data is like the center, the, the way you store data on Apple devices. So basically if you use an application and you want to come back to that application and you want everything to be saved, you want your scores on your game to be saved, you want all of the things you purchased in your game to be saved, you want your information to be saved so maybe you don't have to log into Instagram every single time, core data look into it. Skill number six is Grand Central Dispatch or GCD. Luckily for us, when it comes to this, I feel like when you're creating an app and you don't know anything about Grand Central Dispatch or you've never heard of it at all, it's easier to accidentally make an application with it than without it. This is basically allowing your application to run smoothly, faster, more efficient when it's doing everything an app needs to do. So an app needs to pull data, display information, read inputs from the user and kind of how they're interacting with your application all at the same time. So although it's definitely something you need to know about, that's why I added it in these seven skills, it's, it's, it's kind of a given. All right, now finally on to skill number seven. I've said it once, I've said it twice, I've said it three. You know, I've said this a lot. You need Git and GitHub. This is kind of for a different reason. So I always tell you how you need GitHub in order to, you know, kind of show your applications, your work to the world, especially if you're looking for a job, whether that be for a company or whether that be for clients, which is a very good reason to have GitHub. But there's also something else called Git. So you can either be using Git and or GitHub for this, and that is version control. You use Git and GitHub for version control. So if you have a working application and you try to add in a feature and that either messes up your application, crashes your application, or you really you realize you don't want that feature, you can use your version control and revert it back to a previous version of that application, the actual working application, and that's why you use version control. To give it another example, have you ever had a folder maybe for school, for class, whatever, in your computer where you have SA version one, SA version two, SA version three, and so on? That's, be, that, that's essentially version control. You have essentially one complete version in version one, but then you add on to that, you edit that, you change it, and then you have version two. And then you edit that, change it, yada yada, and then you have version three. So when it comes to version control, skill number seven, Git and GitHub are gonna be your tools for that. And I think that's gonna be it for the seven skills you need as an iOS developer. See, I want to get a little bit away from the more basic points and more basic skills, and I want to address MVC, I want to address JSON, I want to address GCD, and a few of those things that you should probably know if you're looking into iOS development, because those are a huge help, and you're gonna be running into them one time or another if you're getting into iOS development, so why not mention them in this video? But I hope you gained something out of this. Maybe I reminded you of something, maybe I taught you something new. If that's the case, be sure to like the video. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure that subscribe button next to your, I think it's like right under my profile name, next to my profile picture is white and it says subscribe duh and it isn't red where it says subscribe because that would mean you're not subscribed to the channel and I would love for you to subscribe to the channel. But uh, I enjoyed making this video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Till next time guys, have a good one. Peace.